Lizzie Velázquez nació con una rara condición genética que no le permite engordar. Sufrió bullying escolar y cibernético. Se volvió famosa en todo el mundo cuando un video viral la bautizó la mujer más fea del planeta. Pero dio pelea y se convirtió en abanderada de la lucha contra el bullying. Hoy es conferencista, autora y youtuber y predica el amor radical como herramienta para transformar el mundo. Mi invitada de hoy la vi en el escenario, la vi en YouTube. Esta mujer me dejó con la boca abierta porque tiene una historia que es realmente única en el mundo y un espíritu que nos inspira a todos. Tardé un año y medio, pero lo logré. Aquí estamos juntas con Lizzie Velázquez. Bienvenida, finally. I know, hi. <laughs> I'm so happy. Thank you for, for uh, doing this interview. Thank you for receiving us in your lovely home. Thank you. Congratulations, you're a new homeowner, Thank right? Thank you, I am, yeah. <laughs> so, Lizzie, um, your last book is called There to be Kind. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the world we're living in, where it seems like we're pointing at each other, criticizing each other, sometimes there's people killing each other because we pray in a different way, mm -hmm. or we look a different way, or we love a different way. Mm -hmm. This message of being kind is more important than ever. Why did you choose this message? I always tell people this sort of idea that I have that when you see someone who is being mean to you, don't fight fire with fire. Now, we have people also who are doing really, really horrible things and taking others' lives in a really violent way and I'm asked well how do you have compassion for that person mm -hmm. and it's mostly because I look at situations of a bully and a victim as two people in a situation not just one and and something that I love about you your story the way you speak your book and everything is that the whole story is all about embracing authenticity mm -hmm. Because I do believe that when you own your story, true and authentic power comes from embracing your story and authenticity. And look at your own life, how everything changed when you did that. I mean, it, it can happen for anybody. Mm -hmm. Anybody. Like, you don't have to be someone who's out there publicly being a public figure. You just can be a person. And for you to accept the fact that some days are going to be better than others and some days aren't. Now, what was your turning point? Because, as you said, you, feel, you saw it, you felt defeated, mm -hmm. but then a fire started in you yeah. that changed your life, honestly. Mm -hmm. The trajectory of your life changed. Oh, yeah. And I always think that people with uh, resilience and greatness, you throw whatever at them, you throw garbage, they give mm -hmm. you diamonds, you know, yeah. and you are that type of yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. So what happened to you? It definitely wasn't like a light switch turn on moment. There definitely wasn't one morning where I woke up and I thought, I'm gonna turn this all around and, and make this something incredible. It was more of over a period of time, mm -hmm. realizing that I can either let this make me really sad every day or I can do something to change it. And I have a very stubborn personality. We know and by now. <laughs> yes, yes. She's, she's vacuum cleaning <laughs> with a broken foot in her house. I didn't want to ask anyone for help. I had to do it myself. Um, I, I knew in the back of my mind that I wanted to turn this around. And so there was no way I was going to stop until I did it. And never in a million years would I think it would lead me to where I am today because this was this was never the plan the plan was never for me to tell my story and travel the world and, and do all these incredible things so let's talk about labels how because all of us in our lives have been put a label for something right how do we shift the mindset and we do not allow other people's labels to define us I think the biggest thing would be to just take that out of your mind I'm not a fan of labels unless it's on an item. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a supermarket. Right. Other than that, I hate labels. I feel like they put us in a box of whatever it is. And so over time, you just sort of have all of these labels stick to you when you might not want them to. And they just start 
sort of becoming who you are. Mm -hmm. And for me, if you don't have those labels, if you just don't allow them, they can't get to you. Mm -hmm. And the only way that it can get to you is if you're the one that decides if yes, they can come in or no, they can't. And so I could tell you all day long, ignore the labels, whatever, it's not gonna do anything unless you make the conscious decision that you're going to create your own definition of things. At what point did you realize, yes, I have an experience, yes, I have a message, but when did you realize you could be the messenger and this was a mission for you? I think I'm still realizing that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it's still, everything that I do in my life now, with people knowing my story and all of that, that's not, normal for me that's this it's incredible and I look at it as a really big responsibility so how do you feel about being recognized like you said you go to the grocery store mm -hmm. you know or or lately you shared that you started dating and you were already somebody with a following and yeah. well known so how do you feel about um, being recognized it's, it's a very <laughs> weird thing. Mm -hmm. I'm recognized in the most random places at the most random times. Like what? I mean, I've, I've ordered pizza and the delivery person will get really excited and they want to take a <laughs> selfie. And I, I, like, I'm hungry, give me the pizza. And I'm, like, I'm in my pajamas and looking crazy and I'll always take the picture and then it's the back of my mind of, well, they know where I live now. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's interesting to see the places that I've been recognized and, and it's something that sort of comes with the job, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I know I'm putting myself out there, so it would be crazy of me to think that there's, I'm putting myself out there for people to see and if they were to come up to me, I would be mad or, or not want to give them that moment. And so for me, when that happens, no matter if I'm tired, no matter if I'm in a rush, no matter if in I'm pajamas. in pajamas, <laughs> no matter if I'm doing whatever, I will always, always, always stop and take the photo. Now, some of the places where you, you mentioned Malaysia, but some of the places where you've been and you've spoken, this passport has a lot of work. <laughs> You've been to London, to Spain, Malaysia, Mexico, of course, all across the United States. Mm -hmm. Speaking to so many audiences and so diverse audiences, what have you learned? How, do we all worry about the same things? Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. The biggest lesson I've learned traveling to all these places and meeting all of these people is that we do not speak the same languages but we go through the exact same issues of being insecure and feeling like you're not good enough and dealing with being bullied and just wanting to be accepted. And it's, it's funny because it's the same problem everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. But you also have your, your, your share of jet setter life, you know, mm -hmm. to call it in a way you've been in fashion shows, you Which be is crazy. <laughs> like the thought of that is just crazy to me. <laughs> fashion shows, red carpets, uh, meeting and teaming up with celebrities for different causes, uh, Kylie Jenner, Bill Ransick, America Ferreira, mm -hmm. you name it. I'm just name drop it, but you can name <laughs> drop much more than me. Who else? <laughs> I, I like when I think about it, I don't remember. I forget <laughs> all of them. I've been, I've been very blessed and very grateful to be able to come in contact with people who are famous and, and well known. And I, I have a rule of when I, I meet them and I'm around them, I I'm play it really cool and I'm just like, you pretend oh, like this is my everyday life. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I'm like in the car or wherever else, I freak out. Like, <laughs> I can't believe it. I think You're I'll, screaming I'll, in I'll the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lately, it's been really funny if I'll, I'll tweet like a celebrity if I go see a good movie and I like it. Um, I had tweeted uh, The Rock. Yes. And he tweeted me back and said I was a huge inspiration to Aww. him. And the same thing happened with Demi Lovato the other day. Aww. And it's one of these things where it's just like, what is my life? What is going on? How do these people know who I am? As I'm listening to you and hearing your stories and everything, I, I can't help but to think that your life story is so unique. The fact that you had to face um, your, your condition from early on, 
the, the bullying, being brave from an early age, and then I don't know who else in the planet has this variety of experiences that you're going through, speaking in front of thousands of people, meeting headliners, you know, you, you, you met with Hillary Clinton too. Why do you think this all happened? I think that this all happened because it was meant to happen. I think this was my life story and it was the life story that I could have never in a million years imagined. And I think I was meant to go through all of those obstacles because it makes all of these accomplishments that much greater. And it makes me appreciate them that much more. What would you say to the little Lizzie <laughs> at five years old going to the kindergarten? Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say. Get ready yeah. for what's gonna come. It's gonna be so hard but it's going to be a life you could never have dreamed of. Al regresar, this is, I think, the bravest thing that you have done. Lizzie comparte por primera vez cómo fue el momento en que tocó fondo y pensó en acabar con su vida. I hit rock bottom. I was having thoughts of not wanting to be here. 